This is a very different Icon Diary. It's the compilation of seven videos. Altogether, they run for about four hours. They've been uh, put together for the Uniting Church Icon Schools. And I teach in uh, the Icon Schools. And these videos were prepared for people painting their first icon. You may notice that already this is uh, quite different from what I usually do. I normally paint sketch straight onto a panel. On this occasion I am using a, an icon of Christ Pantocrator painted by Aidan Hart and I uh, made a, uh, a grey scale version of it and then I rubbed some dry red ochre on the back so I used it as sort of tracing paper and tracing over that grayscale version of the uh, icon uh, place had a, a nice uh, version of it on the panel and then went over it with a fine brush painting with a, a burnt umber. So that's what you can see there and now uh, I'm using raw umber green as the sankier colour. I'm making it, I've made it quite dilute so that it's going to require quite a few colours. It is better to have quite a few uh, thin coats than to have too dark and blobby. But it is getting quite dark now after several, uh, three or four coats and but I can still see the uh, the the lines that I painted underneath. I'm now preparing my base colour for the flesh tones. Uh, yellow, um, no, not yellow ochre, golden ochre. It's more translucent. A tiny bit of Ercolano red, and uh, I think I put in a, a lick of um, you know, a few grains of the raw umber green just to neutralize the red a bit and now with a number three brush begin really the first highlight although at this stage there's no white so it'd be pretty difficult to see any uh, much change in this icon at this stage just test to see how it's working on a piece of paper and covering most of the uh, figures, the hands, the fingers, and the uh, and the, the face and neck, leaving something a bit of a gap at the edge of everything, so that those nice dark green shadows can show through. We'll get a really nice contrast between dark and light. Now add some white to the mix in a well and discovered that there was too much white and so I put more into uh, another well and uh, so we didn't have quite so much titanium white in this second highlight. Courses with a number three uh, Kalinsky brush and painting very dry, wiping off uh, about 17 times. So I've gone back to the first lot which was too light. Now it's just right for the third um, of the highlights.
and some of these lines not in the eyes but certainly say the the marks in the neck uh, really need to and in the forehead uh, there's a, a coat of, of um, uh, a glaze uh, just to bring back some color because the white makes it all look too pasty but what I was saying was that I've gone over with a very 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 dry brush over some of those lines particularly in the neck so that it it's not as much contrast as say uh, where the, the the eyes are but this is now a final highlight it's got even more white but being very choosy over where uh, these uh, just being very conscious of where the light would fall on the bits of the face that protrude the most and the hands. Now the eyes, titanium white and then mix tint it with um, uh, raw umber green for the whites of the eyes, but then going back to pure white just to do one side of both eyes. And I'd also prepared some burnt umber for accentuating some of the lines, particularly the eyebrows and the eyelashes and then I'd also mixed some Mars black to uh, for the pupils. Now with Ercolano red some very discreet lines the crease of the uh, eyelid down the side of the nose and then some blush in the cheeks. And the hair which went on in a big hurry. Um, the hair was uh, painted with um, burnt umber and then adding white for the highlights in the hair. Putting in the shading, a lot of the shading in this, uh, in the garments and then using Venetian red as the undergarment. I'm wanting these clothes to be darker than what Aiden Hart uh, has used. But one of the reasons for choosing that model was that it is not very fussy. It doesn't have a lot of lines in the clothing. So of course for uh, working with people painting their first icon with our school. Uh, this is a uh, better than having a sort of fussy uh, area to, uh, to deal with. The ultramarine blue with some burnt umber for the uh, outer garment doesn't need as many coats as the undergarment. The Venetian red is more translucent. But I can still see the shading and uh, the key folds and lines that had gone in with the burnt umber. Now add some titanium white to the blue for the first highlights. some more white for the second highlight. Again I've been a bit uh, mm, over the top with making the blue too much like baby blue. 
keeping the contrast between these highlights fairly minimal it helps make the the material look soft now adding some white to the Venetian red for the undergarment the panels that are prepared for our new members uh, doesn't have a kivet off it's a marine ply and is covered with uh, rubber skin glue and and um, well there's I think this is an old sheet as the uh, as for the linen uh, and then the gesso is two different recipes that uh, is um, in Aiden Hart's book on iconography. And I'd have to say that uh, once the second lot of coats went on, there are about I think eight coats altogether, nine coats. Uh, the the final uh, surface was just better than I've ever had. I was really pleased with uh, the the ten panels that I prepared for the school, and this is one of them. By using a plasterous spatula on the last few coats, it knocks off the the tops of the uh, of the brush marks and makes sanding very minimal. So the clevis, the uh, decoration uh, of on the undergarment, and the book being painted with red ochre, and the lines will be with. Uh, yellow oxide so the pages are going in at the moment with the yellow oxide but then there'll be the red ochre to mark the about very little book only three pages the decoration lines I like the interesting but simple pattern that Aiden Hart had on that decoration there. And then uh, painting in the inscription, I am the way, the truth and the life. Um, again, using the yellow oxide but I found later on it wasn't it didn't stand out well enough and I went over it with unbleached titanium one of the things I also did as a change to this was that the less important words I wrote in lower case so that we gave prominence to the important words like I am and way and truth and life The saying of Jesus from John chapter 14, verse 6. Now, some of our students that are starting in a few weeks' time are Greek Orthodox. So, I have prepared Greek text for this passage as well, and they may choose uh, to use Greek text rather than uh, English. Now this is another change that I'm making to this icon. I'm actually using uh, decorations that come from another of Aidan Hart's uh, icons of Christ, the Pantocrator. I'm just putting in shapes of the decorative jewellery using the ultramarine blue with uh, some of the uh, burnt umber, uh, but also the uh, a lighter shade so uh, with white uh, titanium white in it I'm 
and stamping some titanium white dots using the wrong end of the brush decorating the jewel diamonds with some uh, some of the yellow oxide uh, this is unbleached titanium Then I tinted the unbleached titanium with some of the ultramarine blue, which made this really nice green. Using a sort of big brush here, it's, I think it's a number eight. And then uh, measured up where the Yesu Christo would go and painting this with a red ochre. Iota Sigma and Chi Sigma. So now it's ready for gilding and using Colna Instacol uh, for this, a, a German product which makes a very, very shiny uh, gold result. And you know, probably most closely resembles a nicely burnished water gilding. This comes in uh, in a plain uh, clear but also with this yellow there is a red version as well. Only with the yellow I find that if there's any blemish in the gold uh, it's less noticeable because it's yellow underneath rather than white. It really stands out. Again there are two ways that I know of of putting this down. I use a method that I was advised by a, a Greek Orthodox iconographer in Melbourne who uh, suggested to me that it be pulled on so it's really quite thick. You can put it on uh, fairly thin uh, but I've mixed water with it, two parts water, one part of the uh, of the base, and I've done two coats. There's the second coat going on, and it really sort of sits up high. It's you get quite a meniscus, uh, but getting it to be as smooth as possible, letting its uh, propensity to make a pull means that your working surface has to be very flat. That's another thing I didn't mention at the beginning. This is unusually paint on an easel, but in our school 
we uh, most of our members uh, paint with the arc with the panel flat on a table so that's why I'm doing it this way as a demonstration for my students you can sort of see really now for the gold this is 23 carat hard press gold being cut to size Kohler Instacol does have a, an activator which I don't use I, I breathe on it just uh, go on it and uh, that gives it enough um, moisture to let the gold adhere to the to the base then a wipe with a cotton bud and there is the finished icon